A Fox News alert, the United States demonstrating support for its allies in Asia amid growing tensions with North Korea. An American B-52 bomber capable of delivering a nuclear missile flying over South Korea as a show of force. The bomber, accompanied by U.S. and South Korean fighter jets, before returning to its base in Guam after the flyover. Hello, everyone. Welcome to America's News Headquarters. I'm Arthel Neville. And hello, Arthel. Hi, and hello, everyone. I'm Eric Sean. You know, this demonstration comes just days after North Korea conducted that underground nuclear test. Pyongyang claiming it was a successful test of a hydrogen bomb, but nuclear experts doubt that claim, though they apparently it was the fourth nuclear test conducted by Kim Jong-un's regime. Admiral Harry Harris, he's the commander of the United States Pacific Fleet Command, says of the B-52 flyover, quote, this was a demonstration of the ironclad U.S. commitment to our allies in South Korea, in Japan, and to the defense of the American homeland. What will President Obama say about it, if anything, during his State of the Union speech on Tuesday night? Joining us as always at this time, Ambassador John Bolton, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, and a Fox News contributor. Ambassador, is sending the B-52 in, in this demonstration, is that a, a meaningful move and really a strong message to Kim Jong-un, or do you think it's only a symbolic gesture? Well, I think it's intended to convey a clear political symbol, and in that sense, I'd say it's probably one of the best things the Obama administration has done in seven years with respect to the North Korean nuclear weapons program. But the fact that it had to be done uh, to reassure South Korea and Japan leads me to wonder if there's not more that, at least in South Korea, they're worried about that we uh, haven't seen come public yet. You know, it's always dangerous when you have such an erratic regime uh, about which we know so little uh, in control, not just of nuclear devices, but chemical and biological weapons as well. So nobody should be under any illusions. The Korean Peninsula is always a potential flashpoint. What should we do about them? I mean, the Clinton administration, of course, had that famed deal in the 90s for the food and fuel and the North Koreans promised not to develop nuclear weapons. And that was a total bust. Yeah. Well, I think it's clear after three administrations, Republican and Democratic alike, tried to chit chat North Korea out of its nuclear weapons program and failed all the time, uh, that, uh, that that's not going to happen. And I think, therefore, you have to look at uh, at more extensive measures. I don't think the sanctions have worked. North Korea is the most heavily sanctioned country on earth uh, and it's got a increasingly uh, long-range ballistic missile capability and it's exploded four nuclear devices. I think we've got to go to China uh, and try to convince them it's in China's national interest to use the enormous economic leverage they have uh, against North Korea and look toward the reunification of the two Koreas. Well, they're, they're, China is pretty angry about this. I mean, so what does the administration at the end of the day do? I mean, you've got this, Afghanistan, Iraq, ISIS, Putin on the move uh, in Ukraine, and not to mention radical Islamic terrorism. Well, you know, China's angry and then China's angry. They, they, don't, they don't like uh, the North Korean nuclear weapons program. Uh, they say that it causes tension in Northeast Asia and that's bad for China's economic development. I take them at their word on that. That's a fairly logical argument. The problem is, for the past 20 plus years, China hasn't done a single thing within its capacity to put pressure on that regime that would really affect change. And there's another dimension to it. Uh, and that is the relationship between the nuclear programs in North Korea and Iran. Uh, we know that now, going back uh, almost 20 years, uh, Iran and North Korea have cooperated on ballistic missiles. There's every reason to think they're cooperating on the nuclear programs as well. So when you look at the administration's Vienna nuclear deal with Iran, uh, they've made a great show out of the verification uh, processes that, that will detect Iranian violations, which, which is an interesting assertion uh, if Iran is conducting much of its nuclear activity under a mountain in North Korea. That's something we need more information on. Well, there have been reports that Iranian scientists, you know, have been in North Korea and they, they are cooperating. I think there's a lot of circumstantial evidence. I think the most important piece is that reactor in Syria that the Israeli Air Force destroyed in September of 2007, you know, it was being built by North Koreans. Why? Because of Syria and North Korea's long cultural and historical association. Uh, I think it was quite possibly financed by Iran. 
uh, and the fact that it was destroyed in Syria would lead anybody in Tehran to think if we're going to do this sort of thing in the future, we ought to do it far away from prying eyes. And North Korea is about as much of a black hole for Western intelligence uh, as there is anywhere in the world. And finally, Ambassador, on the other side of all this, Donald Trump in Iowa yesterday was actually kind of praising Kim Jong-un. He did call him a madman. He called him a maniac. He called him a total nut job. Uh, but he said he deserves some credit for wiping out his, his rivals. Here's what the Mr. Trump had to say. And you got to give him credit. How many young guys, he was like 26 or 25 when his father died, take over these tough generals and all of a sudden, you know, it's pretty amazing when you think of it. How does he do that? Even though it is a culture and it's a cultural thing, he goes in, he takes over and he's the boss. It's incredible. He wiped out the uncle. He wiped out this one, that one. I mean, this guy doesn't play games and we can't play games with him. Yeah, that's kind of a unique look at foreign affairs. Well, I hope he means credit in the sense of when Hamas takes credit for a terrorist attack in Israel, not, not that he's lauding it, but that he's acknowledging uh, what a lot of other Western leaders will not in this country in particular, that Kim Jong-un and that regime are just as ruthless today as they have been for the past several decades, which is one reason why they constitute such a threat. Uh, Ambassador John Bolton, who the North Koreans have called a, a, a bloodthirsty, venal something, They've also called you a very ugly fellow. Shows you how they have no idea what they're talking about. Ambassador <laughs> John Bolton, always good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eric.